Provost on Blog. We're joined by Dave Nichols from the Capitals News Network. We want to talk a little bit about the power play. We've seen it change a little bit in the last couple months. It's what's called an umbrella style, and I know you've talked a little bit about it, so it would be great with you to just kind of talk a little bit about what the umbrella is. Sure. Well, traditionally, um, most traditional power plays have two point men where the, the defense are playing up high. The Caps recently have been employing a strategy where it's it's basically an umbrella along the blue line where you've got one point man in the center and then you've got two wings and then you're playing your forwards down on the post. And it allows that back line to kind of rotate as the puck is moving and you hopefully have a little bit more puck movement as you're going. It, it doesn't necessarily have um, a mechanism to, sh to set up for one guy to shoot. It, uh, it, it, again, it's trying to allow for more puck movement generally so that if, if one of the wingers needs to go down in the, in, in the corner, that, that center guy comes over to the side and the other guy goes up to the other point, again, looking for cross passes and that type of thing. It worked really well. Just a couple weeks ago, you had Mike and Knubel down on either side of the net. It was great because they'd collapse in, quick bang, bang, you know, doorstep goal. Why has it been struggling a little bit lately? Is it they're just getting away from the umbrella style or...? I, I think we're seeing I think we're seeing depending on the personnel that, that Goudreau puts out there, you're seeing some of the umbrella, you're seeing some of the traditional point play. Um, the, the other problem is that uh, it's it is, it's a personnel problem as well. I mean, we saw it tonight. The second the second power play unit consisted of, of Perot and, and and Johansson, two rookies. You know, again, you know they're very talented rookies, but you know are these the guys that you want to be putting out on your power play? There's just there's no element of fear for the defense to have in that second line to worry about an Eric Bear coming out there, you know, somebody that's got a legitimate NHL shot. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things that's been kind of considered the power play lately has been they've been giving up their shorthand goals. Does the umbrella help protect against that, or is it, is it more vulnerable to shorthand goals when you play the umbrella style? Um, actually, uh, especially since they play Ovechkin on the point, um, I think the point style is, is probably more susceptible because you know you've got the you know you're trying to go all the way across the ice with a pass as opposed to with the umbrella style. There's a little bit more proximity there, so there's less chance to have that you know forward step into a passing lane to go right down the ice. Awesome. So this is one of the last questions, but uh, we've already talked about Mike and Knubel. We've talked a little bit about Obi. What's the ideal umbrella personnel look like? Well, uh, traditionally, you want to have a couple of grinders there on the post. I mean, like in Knubel, you know, both they both score their goals there within eight feet. So those are, those are good guys to have in that position. Um, you want a guy with a big shot manning that center point. Um, Ovechkin, you know, prototypical there. Um, and then the wingers, you want to have good puck movers. You know, uh, Backstrom, Johansson, um, you know, players of that nature. Um, and if you're going to play a little bit more mucking style, where you're going to you're going to try to work those corners, then maybe you find a little bit bigger player to grind in the corner. But again, you know, it, Thomas Fleischman is not part of this team anymore, so you've lost that skill. Uh, Eric Fair has been out for you know eight weeks now, and he's lost a you know that's a big shot to lose. Uh, Alex Edmund was hurt for 15 games, and uh, he's had he's scored in one game since he got back. So um, if you don't have the personnel to be able to um, to use the system properly. Um, you know, you're going to have what the Capitals have, and it's a, it's a complete lack of scoring on the power play. All right, so last, very, very last question here. We talked a lot about the trade deadline. It's a hot topic. Could a, could a move at the deadline help that umbrella style? Is there one, are they missing one piece or multiple? Um, I, think, uh, I think at the deadline, if the Capitals were to make a move, obviously if you were talking about this yeah. before tonight, yeah. uh, we might have a little bit more happier talk about it, but uh, uh, I think it's more systemic. I think they need to find, um, if they're going to make, moves for this year, they're going to need to do it with the idea of increasing the, the NHL talent on the ice this year, uh, specifically up the middle. You know, again, Johansson and, and Pro are both extremely talented players, but, you know, they're all, for all intents and purposes, they're rookies. Um, you know, it would be helpful to find that veteran centerman. They had two last year that they just let walk during free agency this year. Um, by the same token, if Mike Green is hurt for any period of time at this point, you can see them going out and making an acquisition for a puck moving defenseman as well, because they sorely lack there right now. If Green's out, John Carlson's the only one that's got any talent along those lines on the blue line for the Caps right now. Well, thank you, Dave. Thanks so much for coming in and talking a little about that power play style. Hopefully they might get those pieces in there to help improve that. So. Well, they get two games against the Islanders coming up, so that's a good place to start. It is a good place to start. So. Thank you guys all of you.